May only God's word be spoken, and may only God's word be heard. In the name of God, source of all being, eternal word of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a remarkable collection of so much to read about 
every day for inspiration, for depth, for wisdom, and she is made for it. We come to her as the woman with the flow of blood. And Elspeth reminds us that she was, by virtue of her illness, not just sick, but she was an outcast. Based on Jewish law, her bleeding would put her outside of the human community. But after many doctors, and much money, and no, no belief, some translations say she was worse. She had heard about Jesus. And after all that she had been through, she knew that this new teacher could heal. So imagine the scene. Many of us have been where she was. Sick, broke, exhausted, alone. And think of what she had to do. She pressed through the hangers on, the people in the crowd, the people who were just looking to see what the new thing was, and even the protective circle of disciples. She pressed through all of that because she believed if she just touched, as he says in some translations, the hem of his garment, she would be healed. So we have this drum, we have this push, we have this, you know, I imagine it sort of like the paparazzi today with bodyguards, and, you know, a lot happening, nobody really knows what's going on. But Jesus perceived immediately, you know, Mark loves it immediately, immediately <laughs> that power had gone forth from him, and he turned around and said, who touched me? The disciples respond in some way, are you nuts? But Jesus could discern a difference and could tell that something had happened. Something had gone out of him. And he called her out in front of everyone. And the scripture tells us that she told the whole truth. Now, at the end of his time, Jesus could have easily been shocked by her candid and very physical description of her experience. But Ellsworth says, in essence, that Jesus saw her presumptuous gesture as the authentic act of faith. And he declared that her faith had made her well. Now it's interesting to think that this woman, a long broke, sick, tired, that this woman understood as the disciples did not yet understand. That Jesus' power, his real power in the incarnation, was at the service of love. I think we have to think through that the disciples didn't get it yet. She got it. And what does that mean? That Jesus' power was in the service of love. Well, it takes us back to Anne Scott Peck in the West Track, where he says, he reminds us that love is not a feeling. Love is not more than the man in the heart's love for tomorrow. Love is either an act of work or an act of courage. That to be loved, to genuinely be loved, something must move out against fear or against inertia. This woman moved out against the inertia of her own experience, and she moved past the fear that her illness and her culture had instilled in her. Now, this was her act of love. Christ was fully present in all of his love and power. If we think of it, this our incarnation is the greatest love story ever told. We sometimes lose that in our pursuit of what we think God wants. But basically, we're not in a love story. But, but she got that that's what this was about. And many of the people in that crowd had touched Jesus. Just think about it. This is first century Palestine. They didn't have our SUVs. They didn't have advanced communities. They didn't have entourages. People just moved together. So many people had touched Jesus. Judas touched. So we know it was not the touch alone, but it was a combination of the faith and the hunts of this poor, frightened, sick, sick, untouched 